there's the minister, Louis Farrakhan, in his second visit to our program. And uh, you should also know that uh, he has asked for and we have consented to uh, a couple of things. One, there are approximately 25 uh, brothers and sisters uh, from the Nation of Islam whom you've asked to uh, be in our audience and we were pleased to oblige. Uh, we also, you also asked us for an opportunity to give a two-minute statement here at the beginning of our program. And like the magnanimous person that you've always known me to be, uh, we should say this, that we do you no favors, Minister Farrakhan. You're entitled to these airwaves. They belong to the people. And we thank you for consenting to accommodate our uh, format here, after which, uh, after this statement, you'll answer my questions and those of our audience. And why don't you proceed now? Thank you. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, my dear uh, visitors and friends and those of you in our television audience, the United States of America, one of the greatest nations in the last 6,000 years, is in grave trouble, not because of the power of a foreign government, but because of an internal rot and decadence that could very well sentence this nation to the ignominy that many of her sister nations have gone to before her. America is in the path of Sodom and Gomorrah, ancient Egypt, Babylon, and Rome. And at the core of this internal problem of America is the unwanted presence of nearly 30 to 40 million black people who didn't come on the Nina, the Pinta, the Santa Maria, or the Mayflower, but who came in the holes of ships. And from the day that our fathers set the soles of their feet in the Western Hemisphere, our cry has been for justice, and our cry is for justice today. I am not before you to anger you, to upset you. I am before you as an instrument, I hope, of peace, and I hope of reason, as a student of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, I want you to know that I'm not an enemy of America, nor am I an enemy of Jews or white people, and certainly I'm not an enemy of black people. But I hope you will understand before this is over that I am pro-truth, pro-justice, and I hope for the liberation of our people and the salvation of this nation. Thank you very much. Well, now, isn't that a rather, that's a hallmark card of an opening statement, if I may say. Uh, to be compared, if we might, just for the moment, Brian, if you're ready, let's take a look at uh, Minister Farrakhan uh, addressing the African-American Summit meeting in New Orleans. Here you are, uh, telling what you believe uh, with just a <laughs> bit more energy than you opened the Donahue Show. Here's what you said in New to a predominantly black audience in New Orleans. Why should our people have to subsist on charity or live in poor houses when we built the country for you, fought, bled, and died to maintain the country for you? You ask us to pay taxes like everybody else. Wait a minute. We don't get justice. We give you our tax dollar to support a police department that doesn't respect us. We give you our tax dollar to support education that does not educate us properly. We give you our tax dollars. You spend $4 billion each year on Israel to maintain Israel in a welfare position. You send billions of dollars. You rebuild Germany. You rebuild Japan. Here we are. Fought, bled, and died. Made you what you are. What are you willing to come on down with to help the black man rebuild himself? Um, you know what I think? I just think, I think you, you've given up. Given up on what? On the ideal of an integrated America. The dream of Martin Luther King. I think you've given up. This is not, I'm not trying to be a smart aleck now. I'm telling you honestly that I think you've given up. If I may respond, uh, 
The Kerner Commission, established by President Johnson in 1967, said that there were two societies, one black, one white, one rich, one poor, and uh, the Kerner Commission gave specific recommendations that had to be followed if America believed in integration. Twenty years after that, a group of scientists got together to see what the progress was. And the progress is Backward. that we have a larger middle class, but the masses of black people have gone backward. And the country is not only separate and unequal, but in worse condition today than it was then. So I don't think, Mr. You make my uh, Donahue, point. you should put it on me that I've given up. America has never believed in integration. Right. Never. Um, Mr. Farrakhan, I can't really stand up and jump up and down and say, shame on you for uh, this feeling. I really can't. The evidence is overwhelming. Overwhelming. One in four black uh, males either in jail or under the tutelage of the prison system. Um, and, and so I'm here to say that it hurts me to think about this, but I think I, I have a responsibility to understand how a, a lot of smart people would get to this place. America does, is not interested in integration. If that's the case, um, why are you even why are you even bothering to uh, suggest that you're interested in it? Why not make your statement more in fact and without qualification? And if America has not been interested in integration, I assume you feel it never will be, certainly not in your lifetime. So why don't you proceed then from that point of view and, and, and tailor your speeches accordingly? It's, it's deeper than that. Mr. Donahue, we uh, have a stake here. We have helped to build this country. When the Civil War broke out, supposedly, uh, Mr. Lincoln wanted to free the slaves, but according to his own words, he really didn't care whether America had slaves or not. He really wanted to save the Union. Black soldiers fought on the side of the North and the South. The Union was saved, but we were not. Yeah. We have done what every citizen should do, but we have gotten nothing from it. So America is in trouble, and we believe we have a solution to the problem. And if the solution is good for black people, it's good for America. Yeah. With the time fleeting, what is the solution? If we are already separate but unequal, and there is not the will on the part of the United States government, or nor is there a national will to reconcile the differences between well, black and white. If. You don't believe there is. No, I don't. All right, well, I really don't. Okay, let's not qualify it then. But when I say if, I'm speaking now for those who might think there is that possibility. Well, why, why mollify them? Huh? Why well, patronize them? Why accommodate them? I don't, that's not what you feel. I don't wish for them at this point to feel that their thinking is discredited. But if in the course of this discourse and in the face of the overwhelming evidence that America really doesn't want black people, then look, let's tally up what is owed to us. Let's sit down and talk about a just solution and I tell you like Moses said to Pharaoh, let us go and do something for ourselves. Uh -huh.